Hello and welcome to this week's Divinity Cafe. I am recording from Washington, D.C., where I'm here for a couple days uh, just with some different meetings and a speaking engagement and and uh, going to visit a dear friend and a couple things like that. So uh, that means I don't have the whole kind of studio set up and things I'm normally used to, so I hope it sounds and looks okay. Whenever you get me in charge of certain uh, technological things, uh, all bets are off. Um, I can talk about the market, but as far as actually recording me talking about the market without my people and equipment and home turf territory, uh, it, it's, uh, it's a wild uh, situation. So <clears throat> speaking of wild situations, this week, we uh, actually not even uh, didn't even have to wait till Monday. Over the weekend itself, we had an utterly chaotic ending to the G7 summit that resulted in in a lot of name calling and 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 rather kind of significant breakdown amongst G7 allies around some of these trade and tariff related issues. Uh, go last weekend. Then we come to the new week and we actually have. A summit meeting in Singapore between the dictator of North Korea and the President of the United States uh, that could very well lead to a, a peace accord. Um, the, it, there isn't a lot of specificity yet as to what the expectations and so forth are going to be, but certainly a uh, historically um, fascinating moment. And and then you had uh, the Fed on Wednesday. Our Federal Reserve uh, announced that they are indeed. Um, raising interest rates, uh, which was very expected, and then projected for two more increases the rest of the year. The market had somewhat been expecting that anyways, but uh, the, this was the first time the Fed sort of indicated it. Um, the European Central Bank on Thursday announced that they were holding uh, uh, their rate steady, but were, were indeed going to go forward. With terminating their quantitative easing, their buying, uh, their bond buying program in the United States, and so, um, excuse me, in in, uh, in Europe, as far as their uh, measure of, of purchasing new bonds, um, look, all of these things were are pretty big news stories in financial press, and you combine all of them put together, and more or less, um, I, I think the market is essentially about flat on the week, maybe down a tiny bit. But I mean, very, very minimal volatility, very minimal market response. So people will say, well, I mean, why didn't the North Korean news create this gigantic uh, rally? You know, we, we were on the threat of nuclear war, and now that appears to be much better. And the answer is because... The market hadn't exactly priced in like a nuclear war. That's what we would call tail risk, this very low probability event with a very high impact. And the only way to price in nuclear war where like the world is annihilated would be to go to zero. So hopefully you detect some of the sarcasm. You can't price in something that's severe, so therefore you don't really get much of a rebound rally if indeed some of the benefit, some of the risk goes falls off. I would argue that tail risk, um, by definition, rotates. That one tail risk gets resolved and another tail risk exists. Uh, there's always the existence of these very low probability but high impact negative events, and sometimes they're called black swan events. How do you price in risk of something you don't know about and can't see by definition? Well, you don't. So these multi-standard deviation events that exist out there, that's why markets do get rocked from time to time because of the unexpectancy of them. So then when there becomes certain relief that comes about from a risk that did indeed exist, you can't really expect the market to move up in, in, the, in that situation. Um, why isn't the market going down uh, from the Fed? Because the Fed is not doing anything that is negative to markets. The Fed is doing something that's negative to borrowers but the Fed is doing something that's very expected and very telegraphed and very discounted or priced into markets. And, and as I write about at the Written Dividend Cafe this week, the markets have to be surprised by something the Fed does for it to have a, a big shock and awe impact. 
Um, so right now, I think markets are behaving kind of the way I would have, I would expect them to, to. From the central bank side to the fiscal policy side, even on the trade and tariff issue, um, you don't really have a big surprise. I, I don't, I mean, politically and uh, maybe on a, on a global diplomacy basis, people might have strong opinions about how a lot of this is unfolding. I know I do, but, but from a market standpoint, um, I don't believe that, that there is a tremendous surprise uh, around the way these things are going. We got to see how a lot of that plays out, and so do markets. And bo- I think markets are afraid to be caught on the wrong side of that. So um, all in all, it's been a really eventful week. There's been a lot of big headlines, but, but the markets, I think, uh, right now have this enjoyable process of discounting in a lot of the things taking place that in the geopolitical, but more importantly, macroeconomic uh, sense. And, and then uh, short of any real big surprises, probably the next big um, affectations to the market will come from Q2 earnings season. Now that doesn't start for just about a month, a little less than a month from now. Um, and so, so plenty could happen the next month to move markets. We've obviously had elevated volatility for much of the last four or five months now. So there's no reason to think that this very low volatility we've enjoyed this week might continue. But I, I, I'm, my point being that there isn't something I'm particularly looking to that we see in the imminent horizon that I think is indicative of a market mover, um, a market shaking event. So that would be our perspective on, on how things are going right now. I absolutely love some of the material at DividendCafe.com this week. I hope the video is giving you a little information to help digest where things are. Um, and I do believe that the perspective we're taking towards the macro picture of markets right now is being very um, thoroughly and diligently executed in our client portfolios. Uh, the, a huge Im- uh, emphasis right now on client behavior avoiding trying to take excessively uh, bullish uh, allocations given the various headwinds that we do think exist, and yet also trying to maintain appropriately balanced risk posture, being exposed to to some of those good things that can happen because indeed we, we do actually suspect the bulls are going to win out here um, through time. The inflation risks, the interest rate risks um, that exist uh, are ones that we think are overcome through dividend growth and through owning companies that uh, demonstrate their own um, sustainability and resilience through some of those uh, monetary conditions uh, with by, by demonstrating their, their free cash flow growth and ability to raise dividends. Um, but right now strikes us as an extremely unwise time to be betting on multiple expansion, to be betting on dollar appreciation or dollar depreciation. The bets that one may want to have, meaning the tactical inclinations one may want to have in a portfolio right now, strikes us uh, as being things that should be focused on more knowable and sustainable trends and not on immediate movements that are highly transitory. Um, in in the overall economy and 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 so forth. So I hope that's helpful. Um, I want to close out the video this week, wishing my dear friend Larry Cudlow a speedy recovery. For those who don't know, Larry, the National Economic Council director and one of my heroes and closest friends, uh, has suffered a heart attack um, earlier this week, and I'm very blessed and grateful that it was mild. And he is in fact home here in D.C. now resting. Uh, not only do, do I believe our country needs him, and do I believe that uh, his return to the White House is very helpful and important for where we are in terms of the present trade and economic uh, policy standpoint, but I um, also believe that just his friends and family desperately want a healthy, rested Larry. So Larry, if you're watching, get better. And to the rest of you, reach out anytime with questions or comments. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed listening and viewing this week's Dividend Cafe.